Hello everyone. So I'm lucky enough today to be speaking with Martin Oral, author of our lovely children's book, the um, Banish the Cat book. And I'm going to now um, bring him into the view so that we can have everybody. There we go. Um, so Martin, I've got a few questions for you and I think you have some for me. <laughs> well first that's all, good to know <laughs> first of all um I know that I know I've known you for a long time so I know that you've always loved making up silly rhymes and puns and mm. um it comes very naturally to you so I just wondered I thought at one stage you told me that you once did some proper training in creative writing can you tell us a bit more well about I that? did I actually did when I was uh, at school I actually did some training in um poetry and verse I did um bronze level speech and drama and I've still got my medal somewhere it's a, you used to get a little like grade five or something and I uh, don't want to lose that and actually that helped me with I guess uh, scanning in verse and I've always kind of written um, you know songs or sketches or poetry and poetry is good because um, you know it's something you can you can always do when you're a bit uh, churned up about something and it's i I've got the kind of rhythm in my head, which is is quite useful. Knowing so it's a bit those cathartic things. then, sort of. It is cathartic, yeah. Sometimes if something's bugging you, I've written I've written poems about stuff that's uh, at the at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. I was you know writing some things about that, and it's kind of like trying to make sense of everything, you know. And so I guess right. it's a way of uh, trying to make sense of the world, if you like. Mm. And um, so and. So, because I mean, you're asking you, when I started writing. You had some actual training in uh, creative writing, though. You said. Well, I did. I did a yes. I did a screenwriting course. There you go. Um, yeah. I did a master's <laughs> in screenwriting. Actually, now you got it out of me. <laughs> and that was a um, like a two year course, and um, so I did quite a lot of scripts for that and preparations of scripts, and so you get an idea about how how stories work, and. Um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful experience and opportunity. And um, now I guess uh, because uh, you remember we, we, we worked together many years ago when I actually wrote a, a children's pantomime and yeah. uh, you helped us do the poster for that. And so I thought, yeah, well, I remember. Uh, you know, you start writing verse and you think, I wonder if I can make this into a longer story. And then suddenly you've got sometimes a really long story. Right. But um it's it, it was lovely to get this chance to to write something and work with work with you and um, you've got such a um, you know you're such an amazing painter and uh, I wanted to ask you what 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 attracted you to paint the story when you're used to painting um, <laughs> I guess uh, you know what you see around you and um, wildlife and things. Well, yeah, I'm, one of one of the main motivations for me is to paint people so that they feel a reconnection with the environment and hopefully feel a bit more protective towards it, because we all need to um, pay closer attention to how we are treating the, the earth and its precious resources. And if you don't actually love something, you're not going to go out of your way to protect it. So I think that's one of the motivations for me generally in my art is to bring that awareness up, especially when it comes to things to do with the sea. Um, but the the whole thing with cats is um, kind of special to my heart because I've always I've always loved cats. Uh, I don't really I'm not a person who's kept dogs over the years, but cats. For oh, sure. I see. And, um, and so I might because... not have got very far with the dog poem then. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> That's why I had to go next door for my dog models. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. How did you know that the dog next door was um, was kind of quite funny and entertaining? Did you heard it on the grapevine or? Well, yes. My neighbour does have she that particular neighbour has ten dogs uh, because she does she can't resist taking the rescue ones when uh, <laughs> when they become available, and. Um, so she's had a long, long history of involvement with that, with the Montego Bay Animal Haven uh, mm. 
clarity. So, um, and this particular one, the, the light colored one that loves to run around in circles. I won't give you his real name because in the book he's Pepito, so he should st stay Pepito, but- Yes, but he, so we, we, don't want the press, uh, we don't want the press after him, do we? No, I actually had a bit of an interaction when we, when, uh, we actually rescued him. I was going, I was catching a ride downhill with my neighbor and she stops and feeds the stray dogs on the way down. And um, she was the, the person who lives next door to where she does that said, oh, we've got a puppy here that's not very well. Can you take a look oh, at it? So um, we actually ended up changing our plans. We were going to the beach, but that got uh, swiped aside. And I ended up with that dog on my lap, it wrapped in a blanket, and we went to the vet instead. And the poor thing actually had parvo. And it's amazing That's that he actually recovered from that. And it's only due to my lovely neighbor's uh, loving care. <laughs> and so That's he has fantastic. been a bit brain damaged, which is why he's a bit stupid. <laughs> okay. But he's but it meant he could feature in you in the story and in your pictures now, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. it's been lovely talking to you, and we'll do this again very soon. So I think that'd be a great you. idea, Sue. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye for now. Bye.